I'm Blaine. And I'm Brad B. <laughs> and we are the Horticults. Hey, this is Blaine from the Horticult. Uh, this is our episode on hort certificates and education and uh, just wanted to throw out our two cents out there and what we experience here in the state of Utah. It could be different in other parts of the country and also different parts of the world. So um, if things differ from from here, let us know. Also want to give a, a, a short little blurb to our, our sponsor, Lawn Thumbs. You can look them up on Lawn Thumbs, lawnthumbs.com, but also they have a YouTube channel that is uh, YouTube dot com backslash lawn thumbs and you can uh, check out freddy zahn's videos on how to how he runs his very successful lawn care business all right now here comes episode let's get it on on today's episode of the horticult um ooh, i wanted to talk oh that was what we did last time okay these were the two things i i actually wanted to talk to you about um, your backyard stuff, but these are two other topics that I kind of wanted to a breeze over. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I had on here like certifications that you can get, um, and these are not restricted to anything. They can just anyone can get certifications. Yeah, and some of the ones that we have down, and then uh, then I talked about education, like the level of education, and kind of go over that. I think I was try- what I was kind of doing is trying to find a place where the um, the gar- the master gardener program sits to kind of give people perspective on what they think they know about <laughs> because I I was just hearing on some Facebook groups that people kind of um, and I don't want to knock down the master gardener program because I think it's important. Uh, but it's not what people think it is, <laughs> basically what I'm trying to say. But what? how do you feel about it? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah that was – or well, we don't I, need to talk about – well. Well, okay. So, yeah, the Master Gardeners, uh, I, I know that and – I, and, I, and I, I've only met people who have that certificate – here in Utah, but I, I never really uh, went into uh, any depth as far as like what you know, what have they learned? Uh, how long does it take? Uh, you know, is it a year certificate, two year? I'm not really sure. Um, I honestly don't think it's very much at all. I think it's like um, very small, like three lectures. Oh, okay. No test. And is there any ongoing um, Let me find lectures out sure. that they? Okay. Yeah, so I know back east it's a it's a it's a it's a much different animal. I think it's a um, highly regarded certificate back there. In, All right. So what Australia. I found, I just found the uh, the Utah County Master Gardener Program. So it's through the Utah State Extension, and we'll read what it says. So it talks about it says these are the areas you train. Botany, soil, irrigation, fruit and vegetables, tree shrub flowers. It doesn't say what level it goes into. Oh, it's a thirteen to fourteen week course. Oh, okay. So that's that's quite a that's more extensive than I thought it was. For sure, yeah. The purpose of the Utah University Extension Master Gardener program is to develop a network of trained volunteers who can provide Utah communities with unbiased, research-based horticulture education and technical assistance in gardening and home horticulture. Master gardeners receive 13 to 14 weeks of college-level lecture and hands-on training uh, taught by University of Utah... Oh, no, excuse me. (laughs) Not that one. Utah State University Extension Specialists. So that's pretty cool, too, because it's the direct specialist. So each kind of category, there is a specialist hired by the state in that category. So like pests, there's a dude responsible to know everything about the Utah pests. I mean, people... Farmers go to these guys. They want to know when to spray certain things, when certain hatchings are happening according to temperature or whatever. So 
that would be one thing that's that I didn't get in my schooling is that the the yeah, extension that, that specialist crash course of yeah of, uh, is teaching them. So that's yeah, cool. That's great. Um, okay, let's see. Are required to provide a minimum of forty hours of volunteer service. So I mean that's more than I expected. That's pretty close. That's a pretty heavy certificate, actually. Yeah, yeah it is. It's I would uh, liken that to uh, be a, 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 an arborist certification. Right. Yeah. And we kind of look down on. Um, well, I in the industry I've heard. I think it's because people come into either the garden or the. Um, whatever we're doing, like in the nursery or whatever people come up and they say they're master gardeners and they are trying to give the workers advice. And I think it's kind of taken with a grain of salt. Like people don't like master gardeners to tell someone who has a, you know, a bachelor's degree in, in horticulture, this is how you're supposed to do it. But, um, I think most people are actually pretty, well, I've heard different things. I'm kind of like, I think it's a joke. I, I kind of make fun of them. <laughs> so sorry, Master Gardeners. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that intense. We love you. We love you. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's, that's so anyone can get that if they're w- willing to put in the effort. Yeah. Is, it, is there a cost associated with that? There's, that's something I don't know. Um, I would, I, there would have to be. Mm-hmm. Larry, oh, Interested in applying for the Larry Sager's Master Gardener Scholarship. So it's got to, um, I'm not finding a price tag on the that. price. Anyway, that's, that would be worth it. I mean, I can just imagine getting a, a just a crash course in all of the, the college level um, uh, subjects. I think that's freaking in awesome. Culture, it is. Yeah. yeah. That's great. It looks like every county can have its own program. Okay. Um, and they all have the numbers in different locations. Um, but I heard that you're not actually supposed to put it on your um, what? resume. On your resume? No yeah. way. That's what I heard. Oh, that's ridiculous. But I could have that wrong, too. I, I, I would I still that put wrong. that on my resume if I had it. Just as, like, qualifications that you've done. I wouldn't put it as, like, my top education thing. Well, no, no. But I would put it in like well, I put even my applicator license, so my for sure pesticide applicator. I have well, this. Well, if you look at mm-hmm. a lot of uh, um, horticulture operations out there, they are looking for someone specifically to have that license, that pest uh, applicator's license, and so that is completely legit to put put on your resume. Mm. Okay, so that's number one certificate. Number yeah. two. That, that that's quite a bit. That's a pretty heavy. That's uh, a heavy one. I'd... Like you were saying, on the same line of that heaviness of that much work to go into it of a certification, it would be the arborist, mm-hmm. which you've gone through that. Yep. Um, what... I went through a. Um, it was a year long course, uh, every Saturday or one Saturday a month, and that's a two year course every Saturday a month, and. Let me let me back up there. <laughs> it was a two year course, one Saturday per month, and then at the very end you take a, a time test and a very extensive um, test. Uh, there's four books that you need to study through and and know from front to back, um, and. Yeah, it's a. I, I mean, it took me three and a half hours to to complete that. And so, yeah. and then it uh, it's good. That certificate is good for three years, uh, and within that three years, then you can go and listen to new lectures um, throughout those three years to then get your CEUs. Uh, and you get so many CEUs, then it renews your license. Continuing education unit. Mm-hmm. Is that what that says? CEU. Yep. Okay. And so you don't have to take the test again if you right. can acquire all the CEUs over the three year period. Yeah. And and a lot of the lectures that you, that come up are quite important. I mean, they're talking about new pests that are um, in trees, 
and new chemicals that you can use on trees, new pruning techniques. Um, yeah, there's a lot of sciences constantly like helping us improve our, our practices. So that's what it's there for. Yeah, um, like a lot of what I had gone, most of my CEUs that I would be eligible to get were at the Green Conference, which we usually we would attend regularly for Marinda. It's once yep. a year in, what is it, like January, February, something like that. It's kind of a down, the down season is when they put the conference on. Yep. But they have lectures throughout the year. Did you say that? Yep, they do, yeah. Did you say that? Yes. Uh, you did. I wasn't listening. Yes, I did. But that's good. I mean, the Green Conference, and then there's additional lectures throughout the year. So yeah. that's to help re recertify your, uh, or just stay up to date with your certificates. And that's the Arborist Certificate. There's uh, the Pest Applicators License Certificate. Mm -hmm. I believe there's... There's irrigation certificates, like yeah. the Quell. It's like a, um, it's for, it's like an acronym for like, uh, the drip systems and it's like low water use, um, certification. So there's a bunch of, um, other things. And even in the pest, in the applicator license, there's different variations of applicator -y <laughs> stuff. There's like, so I had it for like the lawn and garden. I could only do lawn and garden stuff, but then there's also like, and I wanted to kind of talk, this was the next thing I wanted to talk about was the different kind of chemical, like usually everyone just says pesticides or whatever. I'll get, but you got, uh, farmers use a lot of, a, a lot of chemical on their crop and that's different from what I got. So depending on what they grow, even they would need a certain different, I, th I think like uh, fruit trees is separate as a chemical. I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing the veg, veg, vegetable category is different. Um, I mean, you're going after different things. So like in a orchard application, they use totally different chemicals. Um, and you're, you're mostly going after insects that are going to harm your fruit. Um, but then you also use fungicides. You will also use... Um, I don't know if you use herbicides. a lot of. Her do you, 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 you keep? You, I wouldn't think that would be the one that you would use the most. In orchards, I, I think they just simply just mow the weeds down. Yeah, they just keep it keep it controlled that way. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing I want to talk about too. So, like how we say herbicides, we're talking about pest. <laughs> we're talking about chemicals that go after plants. When we say insecticides, insects is what we're going after. But then you, those can even be broken into like uh, molluscicides. So that would be snails because they're considered a mollusk. Mm -hmm. So anything that specifically goes after that thing. And um, I guess what, it, what I'm trying to say is when we say pesticide, that kind of encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. um, so the pest is, is our weeds. Our the weed. pest is the disease and fungal issues. The pest is the white fly, the grub the all these other little bugs that that are damaging the crop right right okay so, so there's one word that we can use for everything there yeah and that's the pesticide so each category is broken up into what it actually affects so like a mouse killer would be a rodenticide because it's a rodent so there you go anyway very good I just remember them talking about that in one of my classes. I'm like, oh, yeah. And that's always stuck with me. So well, and, and just real quick, and you may have mentioned this, but the way they break that down when you're taking the test is commercial. There's a commercial test. There's a non-commercial test. And then there's a private. Right. So would um, the, the farmer be the private or would it be commercial? I believe if you sell, if you, if you sell your product... It's commercial. It's commercial, yeah. I don't know yeah, if it, that means retail or wholesale, but nonetheless, right. if you sell it, it's commercial. If it's, for example, like indirect, so Marinda, the gardens, we would get a non-commercial license. And then there is a private license, uh, I want to say for a homeowner, um, residential and homeowner. And each of those different tests, um, 
you can have different questions. So yeah, most of it is uh, formulaic. Uh, 